When we think of inshore shallow water fishing in Cornwall, for members of the cod family, we tend to think of pollock, with the occasional bonus catch of cod. A few years ago, Cornwall saw an influx of inshore cod well within a mile from shore, and the last year has once again seen that influx. Personally, I have never known it where you go out to a rough ground inshore mark in water up to 60 feet, marks mainly and normally populated with pollock, and end up catching more cod than pollock. But it does make a pleasant change. I am no scientist, however. After a bit of research, I read that apparently some juvenile Atlantic cod prefer cold water and some warmer water. The scientific reports are too complicated for me to try to explain, however, the reports may explain why the majority of inshore cod we have now are codling. It may also explain why last summer, which was a good Cornish summer, with above average water temperatures, I caught codling close to shore in June, July and August. Towards the end of May, I set out at dawn to drift fish with lures over a couple of rough ground marks to see if I could pick up some of those Cornish cod. Before fishing, I decided to put out a crab pot to be collected at the end of the day's fishing in the hope of picking up a bonus catch of some sweet spider crabs. Sometimes when you set your plan to go fishing very, very early in the morning, the alarm clock goes off. And often I'll lie there and turn over and think, oh, f forget it. Well, the alarm clock went off at four o'clock this morning and I thought exactly that. But I got up and got out for the crack of dawn. But then when I look at scenery like that with the sun up over the hill there, over the cliff there, then I realize it's worth it. And the other thing, there's not, there's absolutely, there's not a soul about. Got that. I've got the whole area to myself. So yeah, so these are the, when it's mornings like this, I wouldn't get up, obviously wouldn't get up and wouldn't bother going out if it was horrible, but I knew it was going to be a great day today. And so that it's really, really worth it. And fishing sometimes, when you look at scenery like that, is just a, is a bonus. I'm on the first drift on the second mark now and I'm I'm into into a fish which is really really pleasing and by its banging it, it feels like a cod yeah yeah it feels like a cod She comes and is a, it is a little codlin. For those of you that are interested in tackle, that little codlin was caught on the sidewinder weedless minnow. Well, the fish have been, there's loads of, loads of fish showing down there, but they're not, they're not really taking well. And of course this can, this can often happen with fishing. If they're not really feeding, look, we've got, actually we've got a pretty reasonable, yeah, I've got a cod again. This one's, this one's a bit better. So it's obviously cod down there. There's like plenty of cod showing. It's pretty nice codling, but they're a little bit difficult to. It's interesting with cod 
assuming this is another cod, how they take. Very often I get a case like this one and the case like the, the previous one where they're actually taking it on the drop just before it hits the bottom. Whereas, whereas of course the pollock, well having said that what do I know because this <laughs> this is not a cod it's a pollock. I thought I thought it was a cod because usually usually with the pollock actually it's quite quite a decent pollock usually with the cod and pollock they you <clears throat> sort of retrieve the lure up from the bottom and then they come up and grab it but, um, and cod can sometimes take it on the on the drop just as it's going to hit the bottom or if you jig it down near the bottom um, but there you go it's a pollock as you can see there that pollock completely devoured the sluggo which I got fished, fished as a flyer a couple of feet above the the main lure the sidewind weedless sidewinder weedless minnow down the bottom yeah that's completely taken it in Obviously thought that that was a sand deal because it looks so much like a sand deal. One thing I often find when you drift drifting over rough ground marks, um, this rough ground mark is probably about 120 yards long and about 30 30 yards wide. But of course the fish, the fish are not everywhere over the mark, and I often find this. And one of the one of the problems is is actually finding where the fish are. And then once you find them, getting them to take, of course, if they're feeding. And, and, and this, what I'm trying to do today is I've found where the fish are by using the fish finder and the GPS. And I'm trying to then position the drift. So I go over that mark, say wasted drifts. Sometimes that's not e easy. It's a combination, of course, of the wind and the tide. But uh, once you've got a GPS, if you set a track, if you've got a track set to your mark in the first place, and you drift away from the mark, of course that track will tell, will give you an indication of which way you're drifting. And so, and a great help when you want to set the set the drift up again when you know which way you're drifting. But yeah, I often I often find that on uh, rough ground marks, probably the same same as a wreck. A large wreck they're not going to be everywhere they might be congregated one side of the wreck or the other side of the wreck maybe sit sitting if it's a strong tide maybe sitting just just in shelter from the tide so after the battle of fishing I find you can have the, the best lures you can buy lures that proven to work but if you can't find the fish and this applies to all fishing whether it's bass fishing mackerel fishing can't find the fish if you're not put obviously if you're not putting those lures where the fish are you, you're not going to catch and as, the, as that saying goes that 90% of the fish are in 10% of the ocean um, that, and that definitely is true half the battle is, is, is finding finding that 10% of the ocean to where those fish are. Now this this was a case that I was trying to explain earlier. I'm pretty sure this time this is a cod and it took it on the drop. Just as the look they're mainly congregated on the bottom and just off the bottom. And just as the lure was going down and just about to hit the bottom, bang, the fish took it. Yep, got it right this time, it is cod. I'm using for those interested in tackle just got my got a lure rod really it's a 
15 to 50 gram 8 foot lure rod. Little 4000 size spinning reel there with 20 pound braid. Got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then the business end, got about three and a half feet of 30 pound fluorocarbon. As we said earlier, got a sidewinder weedless minnow as I'm fishing over rough ground. A couple of feet above that, got a hook tied on with a drop shot knot. And in this case, I've literally I've just changed this rig. I've got a Savage Sand Deal on. I'm going to try the Savage Sand Deal. Um, either that or a sluggo or any, any worm, really, you can fish above. And, and, and this flyer often catches fish. It's strange how it's happened. it happens. Sometimes they'll go for the paddle tail lure. Other times they'll go for this, the sluggo or the whatever the lure is you've got up on the flyer. So it's quite a good idea to have two lures on, I find. Uh, there's often one one will catch and when the other one doesn't so that's the rig pretty straightforward just lowering it down jigging it down the bottom for the cod and then retrieving it slowly up so many feet off the bottom just to see if there's any pollock around but today apart from the one pollock it's been all cod and they're they're hooked down on down on the bottom or just off the bottom it's gone really quiet now for the cod they seem to have disappeared or they're just not feeding but still it's pleasing I managed to get half a dozen cod and the pollock but it's coming up to low water now the low water period so I'm gonna head on into the closer to the shore and, and do a bit of trolling for the bass and see if we can finish off finish off the day by picking up a bass and then of course we go and pick the crab pot up and crab pot up and uh, hopefully there'll be a spider crab in there almost still got a few hours fishing left but let's say we give it a go now see if we can see if we can pick up a bass well i said it had gone it had gone quiet and i thought a few started showing on the fine i thought oh, i'd just go down once more and see if i can pick up another one and then and i was hit so it looks like we've got got another cod. Actually, this is a pretty pretty decent. Well, it's coming up now. It's time to move for me to pull this crab pot up now. And keep my fingers crossed there's something in it. So there you go, how about that then? Lo lovely, lovely spider crab there. Which is really pleasing and looks, looks well over the size limit. I mean I'll measure it just in case but I can see now that's well over the size limit. So that's fantastic. So that's going to be a keeper and a treat for the dinner table. So really pleased I put the pot out. I mean, it's just it's just an added bonus really to your fishing. That you go and put the pot out before you start fishing as long as you can keep it out for a good good number of hours. I mean this was put out at six, it's half past two now for the crab. Ideally if you can put them out overnight, but I'm not able to do that today. But yeah, and the, towards the end of the, your day's fishing or at the end of your day's fishing, ch check your pot and see what's in it sometimes there's nothing and sometimes you get a bonus like that and uh, that's going to be very very tasty if you've never tried them before they're if you like crab they're delicious sweeter version sweeter than brown crab most of the meat is in the legs but there is meat in the body as well and they're of course very very popular abroad and we we get thousands of, of them in Cornwall that come in come in close particularly during the summer months before they dis disappear again back out to sea so yeah so it's an added treat right I could get this out the out of this pot get the clock pot claps down and I've still got an hour or so fishing time left so we'll go back and do a bit more trolling along the shoreline see if I can pick pick up a bass but even if I don't it's been a good day with the cod the cod and now this spider crab if they're interested in a bit of shellfish fishing from the kayak there's there's obviously there's obviously size limits um, 
that you have to adhere to. And with spider crab in Cornwall, it's 130 millimeter, 13 centimeters, centimeters. And it's measured, it's measured from the base of these horns here to, to the back of the shell there. So it's measured that way. And this one, I thought it was well over. So it's measured just, just, just inside the back, sh back of the shell there. Whereas brown crab are measured crossways. And this one, as I thought, is well over the size limit. This is, it's actually 170 mil, 17 centimeters. So it's well over. Beautiful. A load of, load of meat in those claws there. Fantastic. Unfortunately, the trolling never produced a bass, but I will be focusing on catching bass later on in the year and making a few videos. The main objective today was to catch some cod and pleasing to achieve that. And if last year is anything to go by, we could still carry on catching them throughout the summer. So once again, hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.